All right, so last time we were talking about, uh, we started with talking about the principal stresses and directions, and you know, basically we, we said there's four things you need to determine the state of stress in the earth. Um, you know, essentially that's the three magnitudes of the principal stresses. The easiest one which to compute is the vertical stress because it's, you can either compute it or estimate it quite easily. And then you need one of the directions because you know the other two. One of the directions of the horizontal stresses because you know the other, you know, the vertical stresses. You know, one of the principal directions is down always. So uh, we talked about you know integrating the bulk density over the depth to get the vertical stress, or in offshore areas because the density of water is constant. Uh, you get this constant term out front, and then you can integrate the rock density or the bulk density as you go down. Give you a couple of rules of thumb. You know, these are things you just need to memorize. Density of water, density of rock, and you know, more specifically, how these increase as you go down the depth. So, one four, four, four psi per foot and one psi per foot. So, over the continental United States at a depth of 5,000 feet, what is a good estimate of the vertical stress? All right, so this is a, that's where we covered last time. This is a new slide. And so, uh, you know, if you actually have density logs, then you can use that data. Specifically, you can integrate the dis density logs over the depth to determine what the vertical stress is. And so this is a fairly common. Um, uh, what you'll see in a density log, uh, initially there's, there's this constant region uh, and then this is all an extrapolation because at uh, shallow depths in the seafloor, because of the sedimentary nature of the sand, you know, the densities are low. And so the, the data in that region is not always very good. And so a lot of times in these uh, density logs, you'll see sort of a gap in the data at shallow depths. And that's associated with the, with the, the density is hard to measure in that region. So, and as you get down a little deeper, um, these are measured from, you know, from actual drilling. Um, uh, uh, sonic density logs from drilling. And so now I'm going to stand up on my soapbox for a second. I hate this plot. I hate everything about this plot. Unfortunately, um, the, <laughs> unfortunately, this is the common way that these plots are presented. Density is always, I mean, uh, depth is always presented on the vertical axis, right? Um, but, you know, aside from, from, you know, really obviously things that are wrong with this plot, like, first of all, density is not grams per centimeter. It's grams per centimeter cubed, right? So I just took this plot right away. So density is not grams per centimeter, it's grams per centimeter cubed. And then also, look at this. So they use SI units on this axis, and then feet, so you know, English units on that axis, but that's annoying also. Right? So the mixed units on the plot. Um, but also, you know, the, uh, and this is just more of a pet peeve, and because in the past, I, you know, I've recorded uh, me complaining about this plot and posted it on YouTube, then I get people like commenting. As a professor in petroleum engineering, you should know that this is the standard way these are presented. Or these plots are presented. Yeah, I know that. It doesn't mean they're right. Because from a mathematical perspective, you know, you should never label a plot like depth versus density. It's not a fight. Depth is not like fighting density. You know, like when two, like Tyson versus Holmes. It's not a fight. It's it's depth as a function of density. That's how you read that plot, right? That's a proper label for that plot. Depth is a function of density. Now, does that even make sense? That implies that density is the independent variable. That implies that you're changing the density and measuring the depth. And of course, it's not what you're doing. You're drilling, you're changing the depth and measuring the density. Right? So, you know, at a, 
at a minimum, if you're going to present a plot like this, you should caveat it with in the, in the figure caption that you know depth is the independent variable. So the other thing I don't like about it is you know, a lot of times we create plots and then we want to understand like rates of change of something. Like you know, it might be interesting to know the rate of change uh, of density with respect to depth. Like take the derivative of that plot and. If you try to take the derivative of that, that means that the rate of change of uh, density with respect to depth is undefined. But it's not. And, uh, and then also, we want to integrate this. Well, in, in, uh, in calculus, when you learn integration visually, what did you learn? Like in words, what is the integral of a function? Area under, Area under the curve. In this case, it's not the area under the curve, it's the area to the left of the curve. So, anyway, I'll step, get off my soapbox now. I hate that plot. Unfortunately, you'll see plots like this all the time in petroleum engineering where depth is on the axis that should be the, in, the uh, dependent variable. And it's wrong. Yeah, and so again, you know, the integration in this case is actually an integration, the area to the left of the curve, right, uh, as it was plotted. And so there, this is this is a, uh, you know, commonly what you'll see is just a change in slope as you transition, you know, for in the in the, over, in the offshore areas, a change in slope uh, as you transition from the water. Uh, Underneath the overburden. Okay.